I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This is the happy model larva X. What do they think a larva is over there? Because larvas aren't very appealing. Anyway, that's never mind. If you just bought this quad and you need help setting it up, this is the video for you. I'm going to walk you through every step of the setup from just taking it out of the box, which I just did, to creating a model on your transmitter, binding it. Even if we need to go in beta flight, we'll do that too. And then we're going to go out and we're going to fly it for the very first time. So come along. The very first thing we need to do in order to get this quad flying is bind the receiver to our transmitter. So this is the transmitter and it takes your stick inputs and it transmits them <laughs> to the quad. And the quad has on it a thing called a receiver and it receives the stick inputs and communicates them to the flight controller, which then makes the quadcopter fly. And binding is the process of telling this receiver that it should be listening to this transmitter. When you're out at the field and you've got a bunch of friends flying, they're all transmitting at the same time. How do you make sure that you're not controlling your friend's quad? Binding is the process of how you do that. The transmitter that we're gonna be using in this example is the FreeSky X9 Lite. And we're using that because I actually think it's a pretty good beginner transmitter. But if you just bought your FreeSky X9 Lite, you actually can't bind it to the Happy Model Larva X. The FreeSky X9 Lite comes from the factory programmed to support something called the Access Protocol. This guy doesn't use the Access Protocol. It uses a different protocol called D16. Now, I've actually done a firmware update on my X9 Lite that lets it support D16 protocol. And if you have an X9 Lite, you will need to do that in order to bind this guy to your X9 Lite. I have a video about how to do that. It's linked down in the video description. And if you're using this exact gear, then you're gonna need to go through that step. However, if you're using any other FreeSky radio like the QX7, the X9D, any of those radios that support the D16 protocol out of the box, then you don't need to do anything special. You'll just be ready to go. If you are using one of those other radios, don't freak out. The screens that you'll see are gonna look an awful lot like the screens that are on this radio. A few of the screens might be a little different, but you can probably get through it. So let's power this radio on. Welcome to OpenTX. Well, Throttle warning. Lovely. And what I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to create a brand new model in the X9 Lite transmitter. Now, what's a model? If you have a bunch of different quadcopters, airplanes, cars, boats, a bunch of different radio controlled craft, you might have a different model in your transmitter for each of them because on some of them the switches may do one thing on some of them the switches may do something else and the model is the collection of settings that is appropriate for each uh, vehicle that you're flying now when reality i use the same model for all of my quadcopters because all of my quadcopters are set up exactly the same a lot of people in the beginning feel more comfortable creating a new model for every vehicle that they fly, every aircraft, etc. You can decide how you want to do that. In this case, I'm going to take you through the process of setting up a new model because, well, you may not have set one up before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the menu key and I'm going to scroll down to slot number two and I'm going to long press and create model. And this will create a brand new blank model. I'm then going to be asked to select the model type and I'm just going to hit exit and back out of that. We'll set this up manually. Now that this model is loaded, I'm going to press the page key one time. And there's a bunch of options here. I'm not going to worry about most of them, but I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom of the screen where I see the option internal RF mode. And I'm going to click one time and I'm going to change that mode from access to ACCST D16. That is the mode that this radio needs to be in in order to be able to bind to the receiver on the Happy Model Larva X. Then I'm going to scroll down to where it says bind and I'm going to click one time and I'm going to choose channel 1 through 8 telemetry on. Don't worry about that option is not too important just select that option. And then the radio will begin beeping like you hear now that indicates to us that it is in binding mode. 
Here on the computer, I'm going to start up Betaflight Configurator. And if this is really your first time, you may never have downloaded Betaflight Configurator. I've got a separate video that walks you through the process of downloading Betaflight Configurator, installing it, and installing the STM32 USB virtual COM port drivers. These are some things you got to go through the very first time you set up a quadcopter. If you've never done that before, link in the video description to my Betaflight setup video. We're going to assume that you've done that or that you've gone and watched that video and come back. And now you have the configurator ready to go. I'm going to plug this quadcopter in to the USB port on my computer. And when I do that, you should see that COM3 or some other COM port number appears right here. And that will indicate that it's plugged in and ready to go. If I unplug USB, you see it disappears and becomes COM1 or maybe it says manual selection. That indicates to you that your drivers are working, your USB port is working, etc. I'm going to go ahead and hit connect. I'm going to go take that out of bind mode so that it's not beeping at me the whole time. Be right back. The next thing I did is I went to the configuration screen here and I want to check the type of receiver protocol that the Larva X is sent with. And I can see that it is set to FreeSky underscore D. And that is unfortunate because the FreeSky D protocol is actually not supported by my radio. I'm going to change that from FreeSky D to FreeSky X. If you're using most modern FreeSky radios, you probably want to be using FreeSky X, not FreeSky D. There's a, I think there, I know the reason why they ship it with FreeSky D, but we're going to change that and we're going to hit save and reboot. If you have a transmitter that supports D8 mode binding, then you don't have to make that change that I just showed you. But my, my transmitter doesn't support D8 and yours may not either. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the CLI tab, the command line tab. And I want you to see on the quadcopter that there is a blinking red light at the front of the quadcopter. I'm going to type the command bind underscore rx underscore spi and when i do that and hit enter you'll see that light go solid red and that will indicate that the quadcopter is in binding mode now i'll go ahead and reactivate binding here on the transmitter and you see that the light begins blinking again on the quadcopter that indicates that binding has happened there's one more thing that I need to do here in the binding screen, and that is where it says fail safe. I need to change that from not set to no pulses. The reason that's important is that the fail safe setting controls what happens if your quadcopter loses connection with the transmitter for any reason, like if you just pull the battery out or if you fly too far away and the radio link gets weak. No pulses is what you want the failsafe set to, and that will cause the flight controller to know that that's happened and the quad will basically shut down and fall out of the sky. Better than it flying into somebody's face. The next thing I need to do is I need to check the channel order of the transmitter to see it that it matches the channel order that the quadcopter is expecting. And looking here in the documentation of the device, we can see it says the default channel map for the Larva X is T-A-E-R. T-A-E-R refers to the throttle, T. Aileron, we don't actually have ailerons. This isn't an airplane, but on an airplane, the ailerons control the roll axis, the elevator controls the pitch axis, and the rudder controls the yaw axis. And it would make a lot more sense if we just said pitch, roll, and yaw, but we don't. We say A-E-R. So T-A-E-R is the channel order that we need. And we're going to check that by hitting menu one time and then page, and we'll keep hitting page until we get to the mixer screen. And we want to see that the channel order is T-A-E-R, and sure enough, it is. So we don't need to make any changes there. The next thing we need to do is we need to set up an arming switch for the quadcopter. Arming means that you're telling the quadcopter that you are ready to fly it and you want it to begin spinning the motors, and disarming means that you want the quadcopter to be sort of safe and not spin the motors. So it's like the ignition on your car. I think that the best arming switch on most transmitters is the upper left shoulder. Just a big two position switch is usually there and that's what we can use to arm. Some people prefer to use a switch on the front of the radio because they find it a little easier to reach with their fingers. The bottom line is you need to find a switch that you will remember and that you find sort of ergonomically pleasant. You do not want it to be a momentary switch. Do you see how that switch doesn't hold its position? You don't want it to be a momentary switch. You want it to be a switch that holds its position. And personally, I like a two position switch, arm, disarm, right? 
Okay, so I'm gonna use this switch right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to channel five and I'm gonna click one time and that will create a new mix on channel five. A mix is a way of mapping inputs like a switch to outputs to the receiver and to the flight controller. I'm gonna go down one line to where the source is for the mix and I'm gonna click one time and the source will begin blinking. Then I'm gonna flip the switch one time that I'm gonna use to control this function and you'll see it fills in the name of the switch there, SD. I'm gonna hit exit one time and it'll stop blinking. But that's actually all that we need to do. You can see here that as I flip the switch, we can see this channel position here in the channel monitor moving from low to high and back again. Now the documentation for the Larva X shows that it comes pre-configured with an arming range set up so that the quadcopter will arm and this yellow segment of the channel is where the quadcopter will arm. So the low position is down here, the high position is up here, and we can see that the quadcopter is set up to arm when the channel is in the high position. You can obviously set this up any way that you prefer, but this is the default way that it comes set up to make your life a little easier. If we go back and look at our switch positions here, we can see that when the switch is pushed away from you, the channel is in the low position, and when the switch is pulled toward you, the channel is in the high position. So what that's gonna mean is you push away to arm, uh, disarm and pull towards to arm. And that's actually, mm, doesn't really matter, but that's actually not how I like it. I think it's easier to disarm by just pulling towards yourself as opposed to arming by pushing away. So here's how we would reverse that if we wanted to. One way we could reverse it is just to go into beta flight and change the way the arming mode is defined. The other way we can reverse that is to press page and then menu to get to the mixer screen. We'll go down to that channel five and we will long press and edit. And then we will change the weight from 100 to minus 100. And what that'll do is that'll just reverse the definition of the channel, it'll reverse the output of the channel, and then it'll basically flip the switch position. There we go, weight of minus 100. And now if I exit out, you can see that when the switch is toward me, the channel is in the low position, and when it's away, it's in the high position. So now we have pushed away to arm and pulled towards to disarm. You can set that up however you like, just remember how it's set up. That is actually pretty much all we need to do. We probably could fly this guy right now, but let's go back to the computer because there's a few more checks that I want to do just to make sure that everything is working the way that it should be working. So let's walk through just a couple more things I think you need to do before you take this guy out and try to fly it. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go to the receiver tab in Betaflight and I just want to check that the channels are all the way that they need to be. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the sticks up, down, left, right. And what you want to see is that I'm moving the throttle up and down now and the throttle channel is moving. The yaw is left and right on the left stick and the yaw channel is moving. Pitch is up and down on the right stick and the pitch channel is moving and roll is left and right on the right stick and the roll channel is moving. This is a mode two transmitter. That's the way that my channels are mapped. You're probably using a mode two transmitter, but in case you're not, the exact location of your pitch roll, throttle and yaw may not be the same, but you're gonna wanna just check that those are all correct. And the default settings are probably correct for most people. The other thing I wanna check is the end points of my channels. Now, in this case, you can see that when my throttle's all the way down, my channel is at 988, and when it's all the way up, it's at 2012. Now, you absolutely can fly with it like this, but I'm gonna show you a step that you can go through to tweak this just a bit to be absolutely perfect. Depending on the transmitter that you're using, your values may be way different. And if your values are way different, here's how to fix it. What you need to do is take each of the four channels and move the sticks left and right, up and down, and make a note of the values you see uh, at the endpoints, at the extreme endpoints for each channel. Now in my case, all of my channels are 988 and 2012. 988 and 2012. 988, 2012. So what for me it's going to be simple because the numbers are the same for you you may need to make a note of roll elevator roll uh yaw and throttle the, the endpoint values and what you can do is you can go to the command line and type rx range 
0, 988, 2012. Now, you're going to put in whatever numbers you had for the very first channel on your list. In my case, it's 988 and 2012 for all of them. Then I'm going to type RX range 1, 988, 2012. You're going to put in the numbers you had for the endpoints on your second channel. RX range 2, 988, 2012. RX range 3, 988, 2012. You're going to do that for all four of your channels, and then you're going to type save. And then back in the receiver tab, what you should see is that all of your channels now go from 1,000 to 2,000, exactly as they should be. Since you've now got your channel endpoints exactly perfect, 1,000 to 2,000, the next thing I'm going to ask you to do is change your stick low threshold from 1,050 to 1,005. The reason you do this is that if it's set to 1050, there will be a little bit of dead space at the bottom of your throttle where when you begin to raise the throttle, nothing happens. And that's to protect against people who didn't have me to show them along and who didn't know how to set up their endpoints correctly. But since we set up the endpoints correctly, you're good to go. So let's set the stick low threshold to 1005 and the stick high threshold to 1995. Next, let's go to the Modes tab, and they've got it set up for a Horizon Mode and Air Mode. I'm going to suggest that you do the following. Delete those modes, 1 and 2, and we're going to undo Hide Unused Modes here. If you want to fly in Auto Level Mode, you're, you can add Angle Mode, and you do that by hitting Add Range, and then you're going to set up another switch for Channel 6, just like I showed you how to set up channel 5 for the arming mode, we're gonna, you can set up an angle mode or auto level mode, same thing, on channel 6. And you would do that by choosing a switch, choosing a place where you want the switch to be, high, middle, or low position, and then creating a channel mapping in the mixer screen to cause that switch to output on that channel. We might do that with channel 6, which would be aux 2. I'm not going to walk you through that step. I showed you how to do the arming one. You could do the same thing with a different switch for channel 2. I think you can probably figure it out. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to be flying in acro mode, like an acro rock star. <laughs> the other thing I want you to do is go to the configuration tab, and I think you should turn on a feature called air mode. I think you should turn that on. Uh, and leave it on all the time. And air mode will increase the authority of the quad when the throttle is lowered. If you don't have air mode on, then when you lower the throttle all the way down, if you're flying, actually the motors will stop and the quad will fall out of the sky. Is that true? Yeah, it will. So I don't think you want that. I don't want that. And I'm going to encourage you to turn air mode on and hit save and reboot. At this point, I think we should be good to go. Let's just double check by flipping the arm switch. Look at this little yellow indicator. Arm switch goes high. Arm switch goes here into this yellow segment. Low, un disarm, arm. I think we're good to go. Let's give it a try. Now, I'm going to be a bad example here and do something you should never, ever do. I'm going to test the quad with it in my hand. And the reason you shouldn't do this should be fairly freaking obvious. These motors are way more powerful than you think. And if this gets out of control, it can cut you really. Yes, even these little two-inch props can cut the crap out of you. But I would really never do this with a five-inch because they can really go crazy. But with this little two-inch, I don't want to have to take... I would normally do this test outside. And you should do this test outside. But I don't want to have to take my camera all the way outside. I got to... I got to... So I'm going to do this. I'm setting a bad example. Don't do this. If a quadcopter flips out and eats my face, I'm going to definitely post the video. Okay, here we go. It's a 3S battery. And what I want to do is I want to just flip the arming switch. I'm, gonna, I'm holding it so tight right now and just see that it arms. It didn't arm. Why isn't it arming? Oh, it's not happy. Why aren't you happy, little guy? Okay. Put it down on the table. Oh, maybe because it's not level? Let's hold it down on the... You know what I'm going to do? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold it on the table. It'll be out of camera view, but you'll hear it. I'm just going to hold it down on the table. Is it going to arm? Yay, it armed. It just didn't like that I was holding it in my hand. Okay, so it armed and disarmed. That's fantastic. Never do your first hover test in your house. That's how you get holes in the ceiling. I'm a professional.
<laughs> if I get a hole in my ceiling, I'll be I'll feel dumb. Let me move this further away. <laughs> Yay! Okay. At this point, the next thing I think you should do is you should take the quad out and do a test hover somewhere safe. I've got a video where I walk you through how I do the initial test hover on a quadcopter and make sure it's ready to go. And this is just a line of sight hover. I don't put the goggles on. I don't just go fly it. I just basically lift it off, hover it five feet in the air, fly it a tiny bit, and then land it. And then I put my goggles on and I'm ready to go. In the video description, there's a link to exactly how I do that test hover. There's a couple little tweaks. If The thing is, if the quadcopter is set up wrong, it can flip out and fly in a random direction. So there's a thing I do to make sure that I catch that before it gets too bad. And I'll link you to that video down in the video description. Now, let's say you've done your test hover and you're ready to start flying line of sight. Before you can fly the quad, you gotta get your goggles on the correct channel. And my Larva X came from the factory on channel Race Band 2. The exact way that you put your goggles or your screen on Race Band 2 is gonna vary, but you're gonna wanna get on Race Band 2. You can use the auto search function and it may get you close, but you should know that the auto search function of your goggles doesn't always find exactly the right channel. So if you rely on auto search, you may get an image in your goggles, but then as soon as you fly away, you get really bad range because you're actually not on the exact right channel, you're on a nearby channel. So we wouldn't want to get on any channel where we can get an image, and then we're going to want to check that the video transmitter is set up right. And here's how we do that. Now I've got my Larva X here and I do have a battery plugged in. This is a little dangerous because if I accidentally flip this switch, ah, the props are going to start spinning. And you think I'm being dramatic, but these are habits that you need to get into because someday you'll be flying a bigger quad and even if this little quad goes crazy it's still not fun so what i'm going to do is i'm going to raise the throttle and when the throttle is raised for safety reasons beta flight will not arm the quad so that's kind of like a little backup safety check whenever you're disarmed just raise the throttle and then the quad won't arm the other thing i'm going to do i'm just going to set it upside down in fact let's just set it upside down you're on the floor, you know, because who cares? You're looking at my carpet. Who cares? With it upside down, and if I do accidentally arm it, nothing bad will happen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the throttle. I'm going to put, oh, I just told you to raise the throttle. Well, anyway, I'm going to take the throttle. I'm going to put it in the mid position, and I'm going to throttle, mid throttle, yaw left, pitch forward, and that will bring, come back. There we go. That will bring up the Betaflight OSD. Then I'm going to use this stick to move around the menu and I'm going to go down to features and to the right and that will bring me to a sub menu and I'm going to go to VTX SA and I'm going to go to the right and you're going to want to make really good friends with the VTX SA menu. SA stands for smart audio. It actually has nothing to do with audio. It lets you remote control your video transmitter. It lets you change your video transmitter channel, band, and output power. And this is something that's really important to do. If you fly by yourself, you're probably just going to put yourself on some channel and never change it and never think about it ever again. But if you ever fly with friends, you can't all be on the same channel at the same time. So you'll be like, hey, I'm on race band two and somebody else will be like, well, I'm already on Race Band 2. And you'll be like, okay, I'll just move on over to some other channel. This menu is how you can do it. The video transmitter on this quad does have some push buttons that you can also use to change the settings, but that's a pain in the butt. The only reason you would really use the push buttons would be if somehow you like couldn't find the video transmitter in the, the image in your goggles. Obviously, you need to be on the same channel in order to see the OSD. So... You might use the push buttons, but if you can use the menu and the on-screen display, it's way, way better. And the first thing I notice is that this guy appears to be on E-Band Channel 1, not Race 2. So we're not actually on the correct channel. And gosh darn it, it's overheating and shutting down, and that sucks. So I'm going to go ahead and change this from E2. I'm going to change it to Race Band, Race Band 2. That's the channel that I thought I was on. Then I'm going to take the output power and actually come set at output power of 500, which is max output power, and that's also what we want. That's good. I'm going to go down, and I'm going to go right on set, and it will set that, and now we'll be on channel race band 2 at 500 milliwatts. Now, that's good. That's where I want to be. You don't, I don't care about what channel I'm on. 
I, I think you should set it to race band because race band is a great frequency band that's suffice it to say a lot of places you'll go when you fly with other people they'll be on race band and you'll it'll be it'll make you fit in uh, but having 500 milliwatts output power is good because that's going to give you more range so I wanted to make sure that was set at this point you're ready to go fly this guy. It is completely set up. We've gone through all the steps and good luck. If this is your first quad, you're gonna crash a lot. I really recommend you spend a few hours in the simulator getting those first crashes out of the way, but we all know you're not gonna do that, so have fun. Um, I'm gonna go fly this guy. I gotta do a review of it, but before I do that, let me say goodbye to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot in this video. If this is your first quad, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I make a bunch of educational content to help you enjoy this hobby more, answer your questions. If you have questions that I didn't answer in this video, put them in the comments section or if it's been a few weeks, sometimes YouTube doesn't show me old comments on old videos. So you can always reach out to me on Facebook Messenger is the best way to do it or you can just email me. Yep, you can, I, do, I do my best to answer as many of them as you can. Uh, so get, if you have any questions, leave a comment, send me a message. I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you so much for watching and Happy flying.